So what good is, is a multiplexer? Well, remember that for any combinational logic that we can come up with, there is a two-level and or realization of that logic. And the multiplexer has and a two-level and or realization of logic built into the circuit, its circuit. So in fact, we can realize any combinational logic function with multiplexers. The bigger the function or the more variables the function has, the larger the multiplexer will need to be. So let's uh, take a look at the simplest of functions. One thing that uh, I find helpful when creating the logic for the multiplexer, just to help me keep track of things, is to remember what switching functions produce a true statement. 0, 0 for this one, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So when these switches are set to 0, 0, they're actually wired through NOT gates up here so that they actually output a 1, 1. But we don't really care about that. We figured out what that was in the last video. And now we're satisfied with knowing that when these switches are set to 0, 0, this first gate, this first data line right up here, will actually be the only data line that outputs uh, through the multiplexer. OK, so let's create uh, a random two variable k map and look at how we would implement that through the multiplexer. So I'll just create some random logic and we'll figure out how to put it on the multiplexer. So I'm going to look at this. Um, I've set it up specifically so that A will be our most significant binary digit. Although you can wire it really any way you want. This just makes the most sense to me. Um, We'll, uh, because A is our most significant binary digit, let's work with that. And so I'll look at what happens when A is 0. Well, when A is 0, B outputs a 1. Uh, when A is 0, we will have a 1 if B is 0. So this, So when we have A 0 and B 0, we want to output a 1. So here's where a is 0 and b is 0 at data line 0. So I want to set this logic to 1. When a is 1, whenever a is 1, I want b to be a 1 no matter what. So where are the places where a is 1? Well, a is 1 right here at data line 2, and a is 1 here at data line three. So both of these would be set to a one. And that would just be set to zero. Okay? So that was pretty simple, but it actually turns out that for a multiplexer that has n select lines, it can realize any function that has n plus one variables, which means that I can actually squeeze any Um, three variable function onto this multiplexer. Let's look at how we would do that. So I'll again use A and B as my select line inputs and we'll also have a C here. Once again you can really change the variables in any order that you want. Um, and I'm just going to create some random logic function on my K map. Like that. Um, I'll just label our K map so we don't make any mistakes. Okay, and uh, we'll make sure that we have specifically selected our most significant and least significant binary. So this is going to be A, this is going to be B, and what we'll do is we'll use C on some of these data lines to get our to implement our logic. So um, 
when a and b are equal to 0, 0, then I want c to be 1 when it's 0. Remember that we're when we are using 1's on a k-map that we're doing the sum of products, which means that c being 0 means that it's not c. This is really not c and c. So I want for a and b both equal to 0, I want to output a logic of not c. Uh, for a and b, I look at this vertically here, and when a and B are outputting are set to 0, 1, then I want this to always output a 1. So I would just set this to 1. Now remember that the K map is 0, 1, 2, 3. That's why I like to draw the numbers up here. Um, the, or at least this K map is set up that way. Um, so with this set to 1, 1, this will always just output a zero, right? Because there's nothing here that means it's a zero. Um, so uh, we'll put a zero here. And then for the last one, when uh, A and B are set to equal two, then we want to output a logic of C. Okay, so there's uh, that. That's how we would wire that multiplexer up. Now, uh, right now we're sort of really talking about this in abstract terms. How would we actually wire up a 4 to 1 multiplexer on a breadboard? Well, what we would do is we would have uh, we'd have to have two gates, uh, I'm sorry, two chips. Usually when we're thinking of two level and or realization we just don't really even consider uh, a not gate as part of our uh, consideration. So maybe I'll just draw some gate here. This will be our not gate. And what we would have is we'd have three inputs, three different switches, A, B, and C. Say this is our multiplexer. And of course, the multiplexer is going to be wired to ground and wired to 5 volts, but we'll ignore that. What we would have to do is we would wire B down into the switch and A down into the most significant binary switch. And C would go, it would feed right into data line 3. We will also continue up here, go through this gate, and come back and be fed into data line 0. Data line 1 is a logical 1, so what do we do to it? We just wire it directly up to plus 5 volts. And data line 2 is, or, I'm sorry, data line 3 is always 0, so we'll just wire it up to the ground. Okay, and so that's how we take the um, sort of abstract logical ex function that we've described here with this diagram and actually wire it up into a circuit.